Hey guys, Tom Harbour here from Hingeback Tortoise Central. This channel is all about Hingeback Tortoises and our effort to breed Hingeback Tortoises. If you'd like to follow along, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So today, what we're going to do is rework one of the enclosures for our Hingeback Tortoise. And today we're going to look at the Holmes Hingeback Tortoise enclosures. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm fixing and how I'm going to do things a little bit differently. So by the end of this video, we're going to have this enclosure all set up and we'll talk about how to set up your own enclosure for your hingeback or another small tortoise. But what you can see here is the enclosure half torn up and on this side, you'll see some lava rock and this lava rock uh, has a story. What I was trying to do is to create a false bottom to trap moisture and that would result in higher humidity levels for the tortoise. And what I actually ended up doing is just really making a mess. All of this rock just mixed with the cocoa soil that I used in here and in the end uh, really just made things hard to manage. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna take out all the rock and we're gonna put in some new cocoa fiber and get the tortoise cage set up. And when I do that, I'll explain everything um, that I use to house a pair of Holmes hingeback tortoises. So the first thing we're gonna do is to get out all the rest of this rock. Now I've got it all cleaned out. First of all, what we'll do is just level out that substrate that's in there and get the fern out so we can do that. So we'll just level out what we have. What you doing then? So I took out all the lava rock and I'm gonna level, Very low substrate. level this up. So there's not a lot of substrate in there. So what do you Should think that? Should be enough for them to land. No. Oh. So, you know, actually I think you're right, bro. Well. It's around the same. Yeah. Well, they, when Lucy lays eggs, doesn't she? Yeah. And it's about the same deepness as Lucy's enclosure. You're right. So it should work. So there's one enclosure. That's the one we just did. Obviously, and there's the other. So guys, if you look carefully, you can see about the same amount. And Lucy, who's back at that end, she has no problem laying eggs in about four inches of substrate. So, so we're probably okay once we get those rocks out of there. That eliminates, basically what we had is we had one deep area that was probably a little deeper than it needed to be and then one really shallow area and so now once we have no rocks we can then have anywhere in this enclosure road um, anywhere in there that they can lay eggs but so i am going to add more substrate because the deeper the better yeah and how we do this, you gotta pour water on it and it expands. This is called cocoa fiber. It's called cocoa coir or core. We have no idea how to pronounce that. It's spelled C O I R. Cocoa core? Cocoa core. Cocoa core. But what it is is compressed fiber from coconuts. What's great about it is it's sustainable, right? So. How about we do that? It's really, how much was this? That's 17 bucks on Amazon.com. It's pretty solid. Okay. So guys, that, these things come in these giant blocks and what we're gonna have to do is pour a lot of water on there and that block will expand. Then it will break down into a nice soft fiber based soil for the tortoises. You can see how that just grows and starts to disintegrate very quickly once you get some really hot water on there. I guess it's all you need. 
unique smell too. Nice, rich, earthy smell. We've got the substrate all broken up and now we just need to spread it. Let's review from the bottom up how I make this enclosure. So we have a tough stuff tub, 36 inches wide and about 52 inches, 53 inches long. This is, I wanna say, the minimum size for a pair. Tough Stuff makes bigger tubs than this. This is the 110 gallon tub. I get them at Rural King or Tractor Supply Company. They're anywhere between $60 and $80 depending where you buy it. I put these tubs on concrete blocks. As you can see, uh, this is the basement and I do not want to put these on the floor. Inside, six inches of coconut fiber. I typically buy it locally. This time I ordered it for $17 on Amazon. As far as heat goes in these enclosures, I have one 100 watt ceramic heat emitter and one UVB bulb. I guarantee you they are getting very, very little UVB from that bulb. That's one thing that I will be updating and measuring once I get a UVB meter. So that's the basic enclosure. Basically everything you see here can be purchased for around 150 bucks or less. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at what I actually put in the enclosure. First up, we're gonna make sure we have a water bowl. One of the hardest things about keeping these guys is they're constantly getting in their water bowl and you gotta change it like every day, every other day um, in order to keep it clean. You'll notice there's heat and light on one side, but the other side is really, really dark and that's where I'm gonna put the plants. So I use artificial plants that I buy from places like Old Time Pottery. I've got a video of us going there. I'll put that down in the description. And then I use Quickcrete to give a nice solid base to those plants and I'll bury them. And so what I encourage the tortoises to do is hide in pseudo vegetation. Get some additional fake plants. I'm gonna place, move this over a little bit. Then actually I do have a fern. It's a Boston fern, it's not doing so well. Put that amongst. Then, so that's basically it. This is for two tortoises, water, plants, plenty of cover, a little bit of heat. I don't want that hot spot to be above 85 degrees. I've never temp gun these tortoises higher than 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They will bask, but you're talking about a species that lives in forests and only will bask in, in pockets of sunlight. And so therefore I keep the heat to a minimum and then try to replicate a shaft of light beaming through the forest. So let's put these guys back. So here's our big female. She might have some more eggs to lay. And this is her mate. So this is Ethel and Fred. And of course we have Lucy and Ricky in the other enclosure. They're named for the characters on I Love Lucy. And the last thing guys I'm gonna talk about is humidity. Even though I'm using forced air heat down in the basement and the humidity of the room is quite low right now because it's winter and under 40%, it's much, much higher at the turtles level. So down there, when I measure the relative humidity, we're talking, you know, it's 75 degrees and about 60 to 65% relative humidity. And these tortoises, as many of you are aware, they really relish that relative humidity. 
So the humidity is important, however, it's also important that they do experience a drop in humidity over the season. And in the winter, I've got forced air heat. That forced air is really, really dry. In tropical Africa, where they're from, they actually go through a dry period. And in the wild, these guys will actually bury themselves. I've heard stories of researchers radio tracking tortoises and finding them buried underground and they have to use a shovel to get them out and find them. So very interesting, very quirky tortoise. We're doing great things with them. We're hatching them. If you'd like to follow along this adventure, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video on Hinchback Tortoise Central. Go Hinchbacks. We'll see you next time.